So uh, Masawar uh, Barkzai says, why did the apostles not worship Jesus? That okay. is a good question, Sam. Why do we never, ever, ever read about the apostles of Jesus worshiping him? I okay. mean, if he's walking around claiming to be God or the Son of God or whatever and performing miracles to back up what he says, why in the name of common sense wouldn't these guys be worshiping, not, worshiping him? Not once. Okay, so you ready? I'm just going to give you a few verses. And then we've got to get back to Muhammad. Yes, we're going to say, look how they try to distract. Okay, he said the apostles did not worship Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm just going to give you a few verses, but I also want to get the new, the Old Testament passages ready to, I don't know what to say, man, but anyway. Okay, here we go. You ready? Matthew 14, 33. He said the apostles. Okay, let me quote. Matthew 14, 33. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. First example, Matthew 14, 33, Jesus walks on the water, commands Peter to walk on the water. Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus, sinks, and then Jesus saves him because he says, Lord, saves me, which is the way the Old Testament w saints would call out to Yahweh to save them. He saves them, and then he stills the waves and the winds, which they knew was something only God does in the Old Testament. What's their response? Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Matthew 28, 9, resurrection appearance, the first Easter Sunday. As they went to tell his disciples, suddenly Jesus met them, the women, saying greetings. They came, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Second example, Matthew 28, 16 to 17. Jesus appears to the eleven disciples with others present. Then the eleven disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Okay, now... <clears throat> Acts 7, 59 to 60. Folks, I want you to see how Stephen, the first Christian martyr, the first Christian martyr worshipped Jesus. He's about to die. Now, folks, we know that when death comes knocking at our door, the first one we call to at the face of death, in fact, the only one we'll call to is our God. Because when death comes, we cry to the one who has power over death which is God. Now notice what Stephen does in Acts 7, 59 to 60. He's a Jew now. They stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, praying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Did you catch it? At the moment of death, the God that he cries out to, and he's a Jew, is the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against me, having sinned against them. I'm sorry. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Notice two things. When he's about to die, he entrusts his spirit to Jesus. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord Jesus, don't hold this sin against them who are murdering me. Forgive them. Stephen prays to Jesus the way the Old Testament saints prayed to Yahweh. How do I know? Psalm 31 verse 5. Psalm 31 verse 5. There we are told that it is God who receives our spirits. Because the psalmist says, Into your hands... I commit my spirit, God of truth, into your hands. I commit my spirit. And yet here, Stephen commits his spirit to Jesus. And then one final example. I can give you many. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. Paul, to all the Christians, and he's writing around 55 AD, within 20 years of the resurrection of our Lord. To the church of God, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are set apart in union with Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who on, who in every place, notice this characterizes all Christians. This is a practice that defined them and characterized them. Not some, but all Christians did this. With all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both their Lord and ours. Calling on the name of Jesus Christ is an act of worship because to call on someone's name in light of the Old Testament is something you do only to God. You only call on God's name because calling on his name means that you're praying to him. You're invoking him. You're asking him to answer your prayers and you're praising him. And how do I know this is a worship given to God alone? Psalm 99, 6-7 for the sake of time. Psalm 99, verses 6-7. to seven. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Even Samuel was among them who called upon his name. His name, not the name of Baal, not the name of any other God, not the name of Gabriel or Michael. Call on the name of Yahovah. They called upon Yahweh, Yahovah, and he answered them. 
He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the earnest that he gave them. So notice, the first Christians who are pri primarily Jews called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stephen says to Jesus, Lord Jesus, into your hands I commit my spirit, receive my spirit. Lord Jesus, forgive those who are killing me. Don't hold the sin against them. And then what did the disciples do when they saw Jesus? Worshipped him. And you're telling me the apostles didn't worship Jesus?